we are going on a trip from High Barnet to Totteridge and Whetstone stations. Hang on, it looks like our intrepid walker has just set off in completely the wrong direction. Well normally we do a bit of walking and then bring in some history. Hmm, we won't be doing that today. Donna? Hi there. I'm going to do some history here. Will you join me? Sure. I don't wish to interfere, but did he bother finding out a route before he set off? Yeah, he really should do more research. Anyway. Let's have a traditional pub quiz question. Most of the modern London underground lies within the modern boundaries of Greater London. There's the eastern end of the Central Line which is in Essex, and the northernmost section of the Metropolitan Line which stretches as far as Buckinghamshire. So here's the quiz question. How many underground stations are located in the county of Hertfordshire in 2022? Um, Chorleywood, Rickmansworth, Watford, Croxley and Moore Park. That's five. And that's correct. So let's go back 60 years. It's 1962. How many underground stations were located in the county of Hertfordshire in 1962? Let me think. Okay. You've got the Bakerloo line still going to Watford Junction in 1962. Watford Junction, Watford High Street, Bushy, and Carpenters Park. Let's add another four to that five. That's nine. You're right in that you've got to add those Bakerloo Line stations that formerly went to Watford. But that's not the final total. Greater London only came about in 1965. The former County of London had been set up in 1888. The urban area of London then only stretched as far as West Ham, Hampstead and Hammersmith. The area covered by suburbia massively expanded after that, especially between the two world wars. London was becoming difficult to govern by the 1960s. Part of it was the original 1888 County of London, but contiguous housing stretched over most of Middlesex and into parts of Surrey, Kent, Essex and Hertfordshire. Once the Green Belt was in place after 1945, the urban area that London covered was now presumed contained and permanent. So Greater London was established in 1965. As a result, Middlesex completely disappeared and large parts of Essex, Kent and Surrey were moved into the new county. And yes, also a small section of Hertfordshire. County boundaries were established in Saxon times. Some counties were particularly eccentrically shaped. Hertfordshire had a weird salient of land around Chipping Barnet. Formerly, Hertfordshire stretched east from Borehamwood via Arkley, Totteridge, Barnet itself through to East Barnet and Osage. The boundary was so eccentric that Hertfordshire extended to just a couple of hundred yards from Southgate Station. On this poster celebrating the opening of Cockfoster Station, the poster designer got the county boundaries so mixed up that virtually the only bit of the map that wasn't Middlesex is marked on the map as Middlesex. Anyway, 60 years before we made this video, in 1962 both High Barnet and Tottridge and Whetstone were in Hertfordshire. 11 then? Yes, correct. Hertfordshire used to have 11 stations, but now only has 5. Today's walk therefore covers an area that was formerly entirely within Hertfordshire. Indeed, we need to start walking. So down here we go. We'll briefly 
parade on Barnet Lane ahead. Not the only Barnet Lane in the area. I used to live near Barnet, Barnet Lane in Elstree. But once we're across the road, we'll turn left into. I'm looking at my phone with my other hand. Multitasking. We'll turn into Westcombe Drive. Let's try to get, not get run over. It's rather a nice mural over there. Mural. The potter is. So there's a little bit of housing um, in the, on this walk and then uh, pretty soon we're going to be in Parkland along the Dollis, Dollis Valley Walk. More typical nineteen thirties housing. point Fairfield Way splits into two and we take the bit that is according to the map in my other hand Grabener, Grasvener Avenue, Grosvenor, it's like Grosvenor Avenue but it was spelt with an A, Grasvenor Still continuing down Gras Grasvenor Avenue but uh, this sign on the lampposts hopefully sends us onto the Dollis Valley Green Walk I think it's called and then all the way to Dodgers and Weston even though we're, we're following a tube walk we're actually also following the Dollis Valley route as set up by London Borough Barnet and other authorities Trying to get the sun out of your eyes, it's straight ahead now. But we're going to turn left down this uh, little uh, path. Not only did you have the sun glaring down the lens of the canoodling couple, which I decided to cut the corner um, and not interrupt their privacy. So this is this is a wide expanse of grassland. No, again I have my trusty map in the other hand. This is oh Barnet playing fields. These are called. So they're not uh, officially part of the Dollis Valley Walk yet. That comes a bit later when we intercept the stream. So I think through yon gate where the man and the dog are is the uh, entrance to the park. I'll actually do another diagonal here. 
Pull out my diagonals. I can hear the river. Let's see if uh, as a, as a video series called Lost Rivers of London. This isn't one because it's uh, above ground all the way. Can we see it? Yeah, there it is. Well, that seems to be sort of inlet because it just ends there. How odd. Anyhow. That's the river we'll be following. You can hear a woodpecker over there. I was trying to keep silent and I'll talk over it. I'm going diddle a little bit, but. Um, Ah, there it is, there it is. The landscape's not changing a great deal. It's about half a mile since I last spoke to you. So we still have Dollis, Dollis Brook to our right, the expanse of grass to our left and path ahead. So we reach the Brook Farm open space. I'll let you read that for yourself. You might need to pause the video or something. The Dollars, well the river, not the, maybe not the Dollars Brook, but uh, the river or pond has come right up to the edge of the path, which is rather nice. We're uh, approaching quite rapidly now, Totteridge and Whetstone Station. It will appear unbidden over the horizon any second now. I think ahead here is Tottridge Lane and that is the street, the road that not only was full of really rich people along its length, film stars and pop stars, sorry I got a low power warning which is just as well, I had to actually do stuff with my camera to stop my phone just dying Low power mode, why would I want that while I'm videoing? Anyhow, so Tottery's Lane is ahead, which means um, the station is ahead. I think uh, when we get to, where well, you can see like a signpost in a bin, that's the road, and then the station is just on the left. In fact, it literally is just on the left, it's just there. Good.